the, the, the problem with neoclassical, okay, they, they are assuming that uh, okay, you are able to generate your preference ordering. Okay, but they, what they don't explain is where does the preference come from, right? Okay, economic never explain that. Right? They just assume okay, you have this preference ordering. Okay, they never explain where does that uh, where does that preference come from. They do not uh, give values. Okay, they do not give judgment. Okay, whether that preference is good or bad. Okay, so that's where the Islamic economy come in. Okay, so when you when you are talking about preference, there are certain preference that cannot be in your uh, that, that should not be in your utility function. Okay, there are certain preference that should not uh, that should not give you that should not give you utility. Uh, the utility function is not an economic system. Economic system, you are talking about all this uh, phenomena, uh, uh, properties and all the stuff, uh, capitalism, marketing. Okay. The utility function is just a method for you to do analysis. Okay. Uh, so for, uh, then, then in order for the neoclassical to examine the market, so they come up with uh, the method. They start with the method. So, and they, they, they say that uh, and they give everyone going to have their utility function okay? and then they maximize their utility okay? from then they, they, from then they, they do the analysis saying that okay, a competitive market is good competitive market. Uh, non competitive market is not uh, is not good okay? you, you you can you can come up with different ways of analysis so that's why Austrian uh, <coughs> economics do not agree with this utility function okay? all this all this numbering, yeah, giving numbers to uh, giving numbers to utility. Okay, so the same thing. This is coming from uh, Friedman, Milton, and Rose Friedman. Okay, not that one. The economy can be rated for allegedly drawing far-reaching conclusions from a wholly unrealistic economic man who is little more than a calculating machine, responding only to monetary stimuli. That is a great mistake. Self interest is not my own selfishness. It is whatever it is that interests the participant, whatever the value, whatever goals they pursue. The scientist seeking to advance the frontiers of his discipline, the missionary seeking to convert infidel to the true faith, the philanthropist seeking to bring comfort to the needy, all are pursuing their self interest as they see them, as they judge them by their own, uh, by their own values. So this is uh, this is some in a way you are going to see a lot of uh, people saying that uh, homo economicus is selfish, homo economicus is just uh, their concern is just material. Okay, but when you go back to preference, okay, if you go back to preference, you may have homo economic your homo economicus where their preference is not money. So if you are able to if you are able to model that into the utility function, then, then that's his preference. Okay? Then that is his uh, his utility. Then he is not uh, his maximization is not maximizing how much wealth you want to how much wealth you want to have. Okay, so that's why the neoclassicalists are arguing that. Okay, this is neutral. So you can just. Everything. You can you can you can use neoclassical to uh, to analyze uh, to uh, uh, Islamic economy to do Islamic economy using neoclassical from neoclassical perspective. Okay, so the question now: Can the standard analytical tools of neoclassical that we have now, okay, uh, combine with moral constraints? So we just add. Uh, we just add a constraint, a morality constraint to accommodate a spiritual values. Okay, so constraint, you cannot, uh, uh, you cannot do this, you cannot do that, you can do this, you can do that. Okay, so we come up with a, uh, we come up with a utility function that can differentiate between needs, want, and ultimately, uh, a burn -out. Uh, the different type of the different type of goods that that, that, that we talk about from an Islamic perspective, okay? the, the necessary, okay? um, yeah, the luxury, and put it into uh, put it into a different type of utility function, mm -hmm. and, and and people have and people have done that, okay? even though not, not 
not very good lah. Not, 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 not complete. Because not many people are, are going into that. Okay, but you do have. Okay, in the in the 70s, in the 80s, okay, where Islamic economists who study in the US, okay, come up with different type of uh, different type of utility function that take into account that okay, so you, you have different type of good, okay, from the from the needs, the wants, and to the uh, to the lab, uh, to the luxuries, okay? and from there uh, you can uh, you can maximize your utility, okay, okay? but again uh, assuming that. You can have a you, assuming that you can have a utility function. Okay, assuming that uh, the, the thing, my my problem if we talk about Islamic economy, the definition always to uh, maximize falah, to optimize falah, all those things. Okay, and what what they try to do is they try to relate falah and and utility. Okay, but it's not something that that is not something that is relatable. Okay. okay. Unless you unless you are able to measure lah, okay, how much uh, how much fala you get by uh, by paying asal, how much fala you get by paying maghrib, how much fala you get by uh, by by doing by doing good, okay, or by by uh, by doing bad. Okay. If you think that you can do that, then it's okay. If you think that if you think that that uh, that is not Something that is correct, then, uh, then the the utility function itself is not utility function itself is not okay. Okay, so kalau kamu punya apa namanya lagi behavior still uh, still the neoclassical. Okay, but in fact, uh, even neoclassical is uh, neoclassical itself. Okay, when when they look at their all their best, you know something is not uh, something is not right. Okay, the <coughs> The easiest is the willingness to accept and willingness, willingness to pay. Okay? Theoretically, if your classical is right, willingness to accept must equal to willingness to pay. You know what uh, willingness to accept and willingness to pay, right? Okay? So most of the time that does not happen. Okay? No. If if your classical is correct, WTA has to equal to WTP. Okay? But in most studies, WPA is not equal to WTP. Uh, the duality is not, you do not have that duality. Right? Okay, in a typical willingness to pay situation where people bid for an environmental improvement, it is not symmetric to the typical willingness to accept situation where they have already attained the improvement and are now asked for the amount of money that could compensate them for its loss. Okay? So, those two are, those two are different. How much are you willing? How much are you willing to pay not to have, uh, uh, not to have corruption? You hate corruption, right? Okay. How much are you willing to pay not to have corruption? When we ask people to pay tax, then uh, then the willingness is going to be very very low. Okay, but when we, when we are not asking them to pay tax, wow, they really, really hate da, 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 da. Okay. So, you, you, you don't have this similarity. WTA is not that equal to WTP. So, all, all this neoclassical uh, theory you know, is in a way, uh, you, you have problem over there. Right. Okay. So, this, this, this is um, uh, this is uh, regular discussion. Uh, in terms of uh, critiques of uh, of neoclassical, okay. and these are the problem that if you are talking about uh, a lot of environmental economists, they try to measure this willingness to pay for clean beach. Okay. They want to have clean beach, but how much are you willing to pay for that clean beach? Okay. But what is the willingness to accept? When when those two are are, are not the same, then there is there is problem. Okay, when, when, if it, the theory say that it should be equal, okay, the maximization of utility must meet the minimization of, minimization of cost. Okay, the optimal should be, uh, should be equal. Okay, but in reality, is, it is not equal. So, because it's not equal, and you also have other, uh, other type of, uh, uh, other type of, some example, right? 
So there is a need to, uh, there is a need to relook the, uh, the neoclassical, uh, the neoclassical assumption. Okay, whether whether we should, uh, whether we should uh, use uh, the assumption that we are, uh, that are we, that we are using currently. So we have, uh, in, in Islamic economics, we all, all, always talk about homo islamicus. Okay. What is homo islamicus? The, uh, the, the picture is not about homo islamicus. Okay. What, what is homo islamicus? What is the, how does, uh, how does homo islamicus behave? Homo Islamicus, we follow Islamic values, right? Yeah. That is the assumption. Okay? Homo Economicus, or rational decision, maximizing the T and all those things. Okay? Does everyone follow Islamic values? No, right? Okay, so that, that goes back to uh, when we want to talk about Islamic economics, what, what, we, are, what we are trying to study, what we, what we really want to do. Okay? So, uh, you have arguments saying that uh, homo economicus or this neoclassical already assume is extreme. Okay? Don't why, why don't we assume they are the extreme? Okay? Homo economicus, we assume they are selfish. They are selfish. Lah. They are pursuing their self-interest, they are maximizing utility, they are rational. Okay? So, homo islamicus, they are nice people, very, very buying, <laughs> give charity and on, on all the things. Okay, so, so now we, we go back to, we, uh, we argue against homo islamicus because they are, they are not realistic, right? Okay. But does homo islamicus realistic or not? It is also, it is also not realistic. Okay, so now what, so, so that's the question. Okay. What, what, what really is Islamic context, what we are trying to study? If let's say uh, our goal is to uh, rather than trying to study what is the economic condition of the countries, what is the behavior of the people, what are, what people are doing. Okay? If let's say what we try to what we try to do is we are trying to push people to a certain prescribed behavior. Okay? If our goal is to push people to a certain prescribed behavior, to Islamic behaviors, then homo islamicus is good. But if our goal is to describe what is happening in the economy currently, okay, then we cannot assume that everyone are good. Okay, we have to be we have to be realistic. You have people who are good, we have people who are bad. Yeah. So that's where the, the behavior behavioral is coming up. Yeah, the behaviorists are going to assume that they, 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 they are looking at the behavior, the, the real behavior of the real behavior of the people. Okay? So when, when the, the problem is that okay, it is nice to look, uh, it's nice to think about what's really happening in the economy. Okay? It's nice to think about what really happened in the society. Okay? But it's not something that is easy. To, uh, uh, to have an assumption okay, that you to, to have different people have different behavior. Okay? It is not something that is easy to do, to, to do it analytically. Okay? You have this person behave like this, this, this person behave like this, this person behave like this. Okay? It is not easy to do it analytically. It's, it is easy. Everyone are the same. Everyone is rational. So if everyone is uh, rational, this is what you are going to get. Everyone are nice. This is what you are going to get. You don't have to do a lot of analysis because if you have different people have different uh, uh, have different behaviors, then it's not going to be easy. Okay? Even if you look at all this uh, current neoclassical model, you do have model that have some type of heterogene heterogeneity. Okay. But they may have two, three different groups, at most three, three different groups, if they're looking at it from a classical perspective. 
can be cost to do maximization when you have different type of uh, uh, different type of agent is going to be very very hard. Okay, so back to this uh, homo islamicus, homo economicus. So people are emotional. Not can, can I uh, ask question? Yeah. Uh, uh, in mainstream economies in neoclassical, the I think in mainstream economy, but I don't know whether it's neoclassical or not. The famous argument when people criticize about homo economicus is they give they give the statement. I think Milton Friedman about he give the example of a pool player. I think you know right. Yeah. So he said that the pool player will even though when he play the ball. Not necessarily follow the what he expected, but yeah. he will do his best to do the calculation and everything. So what's your yeah. argument? He, he yeah. don't he don't know he don't need to know about the physics. He just see. Yeah. And, okay, so we will go into that later. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So back to this. Oh, you have more Islamicus, or more economicus, or more people are emotional. Okay. Uh, in reality. Uh, people are not rational. People are people are emotional. Okay, so that that is the problem now. Uh, it is it's much easier to make decision. It's much e easier to come up with a uh, uh, to come up with solution. It's much easier to come to the equilibrium if people are rational. Okay, when you put irrationality, when when you put biasness, it's going to it, it is going to make the matters become very complicated. Yeah, I think that's that is the reason the the early neoclassical model in the nineteen fifties, the nineteen sixties, okay, they stick with the rational uh, decision. They stick with the assumption of maximizing utility. They stick with the assumption of self interest. Okay, but when you move to the nineteen seventies, you move to the nineteen eighties, you move to the nineteen nineties. It, you have you have different type different perspective coming in okay uh, so you have uh, behavioral coming in okay, slowly in the 19 okay, really famous I think 1980s 1970s okay when uh, what was the name uh, there was there was the, 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 the thing uh, uh, Kahneman and the, the team, and you have studies on uh, uh, dynamic game, the studies on dynamic prisoner's dilemma, okay, where it, where the results differ from the uh, 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 from your classical uh, result. Okay. You have studies on chaos. You have studies on uh, a lot of studies on dynamic. Okay, so we start with studies on static, okay, looking at general equilibrium, okay, trying to compare comparative market, which one is better, comparative market or, or non-comparative market. So, and at that time, it's still very, very static in the 1950s. But as you move to the 1960s, 70s, 80s, when the maps become much more sophisticated, computers become much cheaper. Then you have different type of you have different type of analysis. Okay, so it's just a uh, uh, you have your classical proof. You have the economy. Uh, you have the, the study of economic changes okay, with the uh, with the, the new method that the, the new method that you have. Okay. In the nineteen fifties, you don't have like you don't have computers. You still you already have computers, but the computer is the size of the zoom. Okay, so for you to do complicated calculation may take one day, two days. Okay, today, uh, just a click of a button, uh, you get uh, all the numbers ready. Okay, so it's much easier to do something that is something that is more complex. Okay, so that's why you have this. That's why you have these changes. Okay, it's not that at that time people don't know about this. In the nineteen fifties, they know, and they know people behave differently. They know people are not are not very rational, but it's not something that is easy to something that is easy. Analyze. Okay, just start with something that is easy, and then go to something that is uh, that is much harder. Right. Wow. Oh, no, this good. I don't know. Ah, ini apa ni punya kan? Apa nama? Yusuf Ali. Ah, okay. So, yes, back to Homo Islamicus. Even in the Quran, uh, 
the Quran talk about people that are transgressing. That not everyone are nice. Okay, people are not nice. So we know in the Quran say that you have people who are nice, people who are not nice. Then why do we just why do we stick to that people are very 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 nice? Okay, so maybe we, we need to maybe we need to look at both. Okay. Um, I have a discussion with my students with regard to this. So, what is going to happen to the nice people? If, if, if you put nice people and not nice people in the room. Okay, so what's going to happen to the nice people? Uh, will everyone become not nice? Or everyone become nice? Or the not nice people going, going to kill all the nice people? The anybody has not nice people. So, uh, years ago, thousand years ago, you had people. How 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 do we get a state? How do how does the state form? How do you uh, how does the state form? Okay, most of the time you have bandits. You go and from 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 your wars. Okay, the 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 one who wins, uh, going to take all the going to take all the wealth. Okay, then the bandits no ala. As in up, you put around here. Okay, why don't we stay at, we settle down at one place, set up an army, build a fort. If you want to live in this fort, you have to pay tax. Uh, then, uh, uh, instead of uh, killing people, now you ask people to pay tax. Okay, <laughs> okay so you start. So, so that, 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 that's why I have that question. So what is going to happen if you have a place, okay, you, have, you have a group of people who are not nice, you have a group of people who are very, very nice. What is going to happen to that nice people? Here we are talking about thousand years ago, you have war. If the nice people are not very bright, then it's going to be killed by all these not nice people. Biologists who uh, construct the idea of how uh, behavior is evolved within, you know, like hundreds of years or something like that. Yeah. And it also uh, explains how animal behavior, like, who is really dependent on someone else, and there's an animal, animal who is actually. Uh, I think for good sense of course. Yes, yeah. Uh, so in the animal world, uh, you, you have an equilibrium. You have a, most of the time, you are going to have a cycle. Okay. In fact, you, you have a lot of different models looking at the cycle. Uh, when you have people, when, when you have to prey, uh, pre predator and prey. Okay. When you have a lot of prey, then what's going to happen? When you have a lot, uh, what's, what's going to be the, what's going to be the equilibrium? Okay. Uh, <coughs> So anyway, uh, the thing now is that okay, if you if you want to talk about Islam economics, I, 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 I go back to this assumption of homo Islamicus. So whether we want to have an assumption of homo Islamicus, so it's, it has to go back to what Islamic economy is trying to what Islamic economy is trying to study. No, I'm just uh, because when you mention about whether. The what what the good guy can do to the, can be whether he, he will be affected or he will be affecting by the bad people. Okay, we take the one real case, even though that person will not exist anymore, like the prophet. He is a real person, he exists. And in fact if we can do analyze, we're not analyzing a missed people because he exists in reality. So why your comment about it? Yeah. Because he's totally affecting people. And your argument is about uh, when you say war is bad I think in our religion, war is not haram. It is permissible for some reason, uh, at some extent. But it's not totally haram. So, using the argument that war is always haram, it's not. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I think we, we don't use that. We, we, don't, we are not saying that war is haram. Uh, okay. Uh, even if you look at. Uh, Talking about Thomas Hobbes, talking about uh, something like Rousseau, okay. all these, uh, all these, all these ideas, 
about political economy or the ideas of utility function. Okay, you, you can relate to Tom Hobbes and also okay, Hobbes Hobbes assumption with regard to behavior of people are very very dark. If people are very very bad because people are very very bad, you need to have a government that control these people. Why am I using okay. that? Okay. But then you have ideas of the soul. People are not so bad. Okay. But still, you have some who are very, some who are bad. Okay. Uh, so, so, so when, when, when we want to make assumption, those are the things that we, that, that, that we need to look at. Okay. So, whether we can just say that everyone are good or we want to say that everyone are, uh, whether we want to say that everyone are bad. Okay. What, what is going to be the implications? Okay. <laughs> so, so that's the question. Uh. Okay, so why behavior in economics? Okay, let's do something that is much lighter, okay, much faster. Okay, uh, we know that the uh, economic model, the homo economic model that, uh, that neoclassical uh, are using now, okay, you have problem. Okay, so this is the assumption from, uh, from neoclassical. Uh, uh, economic agent maximize utility, update belief according to be useful, selfish, without emotion, uh, does not care about the consumption and utility of others. So this is usually this is the assumption from uh, from your classical perspective. Okay, and from this assumption you have all this uh, money. Uh, and the conclusion from uh, the conclusion from your, your classical and I think most of you don't agree with these assumptions. Right. Okay, so most of you don't uh, agree with this assumption, and most Islamic economists don't agree. Islamic economists don't agree with uh, this assumption, so that's why we want to look at behavioral economics. Okay, uh, but they, they do come up with a good thing. Okay, uh, maximization of utility come up with the downward sloping demand curve, upward sloping supply curve. That's correct. Okay. Okay. So what does uh, Behavioral economy added to this uh, standard neoclassical, uh, neoclassical economics. Okay? So what they are trying to do, they are they are trying to add more. They are trying to add reality into the uh, into neoclassical economics. Trying to add more uh, more real uh, behavior of uh, uh, of economic agents. Okay? where they assume. Uh, if it's rationality, it's just bounded rationality. What is bounded rationality? I'm still confused. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, bring in adaptive behaviors, biases, interdependent preference, emotion, learning, all all type of different things. Okay. Try to uh, try to include that uh, into uh, into the utility function. Okay. Very important. Most of the time, when you talk about the Behavioral economics, they are still limited to. Uh, they are they, they are still using the neoclassical method of analysis most of the time. Okay? they are still based on the neoclassical analysis. The the thing that they change, they change the utility function and they change the they change the constraint. Okay? so instead of. Uh, uh, maximizing uh, utility where the person have all the information okay? they have a different assumption okay? rather than maximizing utility the person the economy agent may be satisfying the, the economy agent in trying to make decision uh, they, they are using they, they follow what they have done uh, last period okay? adaptive behavior in fact, uh, when, when you have studies on crisis, okay, most of the stu studies on crisis always look at uh, people following what other people are what other people are doing. Okay, they are they are following the they are following the herd. Okay, what the herd are doing, then people just follow. So that's also uh, that's also behavioral. Okay, so you said that you are confused with uh, bounded rationality. Please explain. Why are you confused? Because I'm, I think I will be more confused than you. I'm just confused. How do we 
what's happened and you give money to a certain group of you do not give money to a certain group of people what happened to what happened to that what happened to that community okay so it can be in terms of experiments it can be theoretical and game theory lah basically in an evolutionary game theory okay and you can also do simulations okay so one of my students are doing agent based model okay try to because we know that there is no islamic economy the argument is that when you have an Islamic economy, uh, the economy is going to be better than non-Islamic economy. Okay, so what we are doing now is we have an agent-based model where we come up with three different types of economy. One economy is the conventional economy where you have interest rate. One economy is you have a pure Islamic economy where all, uh, all the banking transactions are mudaraba. Uh, and then you have another economy where uh, where it is something like many markup, okay, markup contracts. Okay, so then we look at okay, where when you have these agents interacting in these three different economies. Okay, the, the three the three different economies do not interact with each other. Okay, so you have three different economies. Okay, so what is the outcome in a uh, Interest-based economy. What and what is the outcome in the non-interest-based economy in terms of GDP, in terms of in terms of stability? Okay. So currently, what we have is that we are able to show that in an Islamic economy, it is much more stable. Okay. okay. So you have this different. We have this different method for you to uh, for you to do analysis. Uh, for neoclassical, most of the time it is the uh, it is theoretical. Or you just do your uh, econometrics. Okay. Uh, what about policy? So you can also uh, think, uh, talk about policy uh, from uh, the behavioral economics. I think this, this, is, this is an example. Uh, this one is come from which I already forget the books. Okay. Uh, this is problem with for primary school and SPs in parent teaching their children. Ah, little lah. Okay, so what the what the school try to do is the school try to reduce the number of parents who come late to pick up their children. Okay, so what what the nurseries want to do is the nurseries want to reduce the number of parents who come late to the who come late and, uh, who come late to the school to pick up their children. Okay, so what they do is they just follow the. Um, uh, uh, they follow the neoclassical punya penama ni lah <laughs> prescription uh, if you late, uh, I'll find okay, you have to pay penalty ok, so what happened? Uh, so, after introducing the penalty, more parents come to <laughs> why? because uh, the parents see that way now I'm paying for being late uh, I, I'm paying you for being so uh, they, they don't feel bad for them from uh, for for being late now. Okay. Previously they feel bad for being late. Okay, uh, the, the the orange one is the control room. Okay, where, where they are, uh, <laughs> where they are not penalized for being late. Okay, so when when they are not penalized for being late, they don't have to pay. They feel bad for being late. Now that they have to pay, uh, they don't, they don't, they don't feel bad anymore, so they keep being late. Okay, so that you, you can reduce the uh, you can reduce the number the number of late by increasing the penalty lah. Okay, maybe if let's say the penalty is ten uh, ten ringgit now, you increase to twenty, to increase to thirty, you increase to forty, then it is going to reduce lah. Okay, but there's going to be other problems. Why is the first five days the number? Well, they start. The, I think they start the trial on the. In before, before the fine was introduced, okay, so that's why the week five, uh, week five is uh, is increased, okay. So it's 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 just showing you uh, the neoclassical prescription may not be uh, may not be right, okay. So you you may want to look at different ways of incentivizing people. Yeah. Rather than incentive in term of uh, in term of money, okay, you may have incentive in term of okay. So this one, if you are late, uh, 
So we put your name on the WhatsApp group. Something like that. You can you can publish it with uh, the parents. So that can be one way to solve the problem. Okay. So that's the behavioral ways of uh, of coming up with policy. Okay. okay. So just a little digression. Uh, so what you have over there okay, is, is stated over there. If let's say you only have one pendulum, okay, yeah, one pendulum you are going to have an equilibrium, right? Okay, just going up, down, up, down, up, down. Now you have a double dot pendulum. You have a pendulum, one pendulum, and you have another pendulum uh, at the end of that pendulum. Okay, so what you have now, okay, you have something that is uh, you cannot find the equilibrium anymore. Okay, it's become it's become chaotic, right? <laughs> What, uh, what do I want to go here? Okay. <laughs> now you, have, you need to have some mathematics. <laughs> okay. uh, uh, this is just uh, an equation, uh, a logistic uh, equation. Okay, looking at the relationship. Okay, so imagine now, uh, okay, let's say uh, x is price. Okay, and price today. Uh, price tomorrow, xn plus 1 is equal to r xn times 1 minus xn. So how do you make decision? Let's say, uh, uh, how do you make decision in terms of price? Okay, how, the way you set price, you depend on the uh, price yesterday. Price tomorrow depends on price yesterday. Okay. Very, very, very simple. Uh, very, very simple equation. Okay. Now, what is going to be uh, what's going to happen to the uh, uh, to the trend in the price? What's going to happen to the price? Okay. If this is uh, this is how you model price, okay. That's what's going to happen to the price, okay? Where depending on the value of R, okay, depending on the value of R, R x n plus one is equal to R x n. Time one minus x n over there. Okay, so if let's say r is equal to one, <coughs> you are going to have a convergent equilibrium price. Okay, when r is equal to point seven, you have you are looking at a uh, panel B. Okay, so you are going to have price uh, in the end price T M one place. If r is equal to three point five. What's going to happen to price? You are going to have a cycle. Okay, price go up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. When R is equal to 3.9, you are going to have some chaos. Okay, so why am I showing this? I'm trying to figure out <laughs> why am I showing this. I'm trying to relate to that uh, uh, to their uh, uh, behavior in economics. So when, 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 when we look at the economy, let's say we think about our neoclassical, okay? All this neoclassical is going to have this very, very nice equation, okay? But from this very, very simple equation, okay? nice simple equation, just very, very short equation, what the outcome that you get, you're going to have different type of outcome, okay? The equation that you have in the neoclassical, most of the time that you have in your textbook, okay, the, the equation that you have in the textbook is already an equation that is very, very nice that's going to give you a nice outcome. Okay. In reality, you are you have a lot of you have uh, a lot of situation where you change the situation a little bit, you are going to get a totally different outcome. Okay, so that's why this behavioral economy is very, very important. Okay, if you assume that everyone behave the same, da, 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 okay, you may be able to get a, a nice outcome. But if if the assumptions just change a little bit, okay, you get a totally different result. So this is just showing you when you change your coefficient a little bit, you may have something that is stable. You may have something that is cyclical you may have something that is chaotic. Okay? Just depending on the 
value of and uh, just depending on the value of r. Okay. In, in fact, okay, uh, when people study all these behavioral economics, uh, those people study behavioral economics also look at this and also look at this chaotic. Uh, uh, also look at the, all these kind of theories looking at the dynamic, uh, dynamic economy, uh, dynamic and dynamic economy, complex economic dynamics. Okay. Okay. So that's the uh, that's the cycle. Okay. okay so come back. <coughs> Semua semua dah dah makin makin pening dia. Tu filosofi tu. Okay, so that that's one way of looking at behavioral economics, looking at it from the and most of the time when you when, when you read uh, behavioral economics, you are going to be looking at uh, they they are trying to relate psychology with uh, psychology with economics. Okay. Uh, but most of you know about general of economic behavior and organization, right? Do you know about general of economic behavior and organization? Okay, so that is one of one of the first general that uh, that's trying to uh, where you can publish behavioral economics, uh, or if you want to publish something on Islamic economic, then you, you can you can do it over there because. Um, that's one of the first things that look at uh, uh, trying to explain economic from uh, try to relate economic and psychology. Try to look at uh, the study of economic where we have different type of assumption rather than just uh, utility maximization. Okay, so this is the this is how the. <coughs> Uh, the first editor of Journal of Behavioral uh, Economics defined behavioral economics. Journal of Economic Behavior and Organization defined behavioral economics. Okay, behavioral economics consists of consists in identifying general characteristics, rules, or principle of economic behavior based on direct observation and inquiry. Okay, so rather than based on Rather than based on, uh, you, you start based on assumption of maximizing utility. Okay? You start based on max assumption of maximizing economic profit. Okay? You, you, you look at how the, uh, how the economic agent make decisions. You look at how the firm make decisions. Okay? So the early studies looking at how firm make decisions by Sayyid in March. Okay? Rather than Talking about firm maximize their profit, okay? looking at production function and cost function. Okay? When they go to the firm, there is no production function, there is no cost function, they look at the process, okay? the, the engineering process, how you go from process A to process B to process C, okay? and how, how, does the, how does the firm make decisions. Okay? Okay. Uh, and so number two, constructing model based on these characteristics. So you construct model based on your observation. Okay, you look at how does people make decision. Okay, determining the extent to which behavioral model approximate uh, observed behaviors, and you look at does your model, uh, and then you compare your model with your uh, with the the, 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 the the real behavior. Okay, and then you're going to use the model to generate. Uh, Another policy analysis or whatever you want to do okay, uh, to, to generate future behaviors. Okay, so this is the uh, a much more general ways of looking at behavioral economics, not just uh, relate, try to relate the study of psychology and uh, psychology and economics. Okay, so that's why if you look at the early studies, you also have a lot of studies looking at uh, rather than maximizing behaviors, you are looking at adaptive behaviors. Okay. So now, if let's say that's what you want to do, okay? If let's say that's what you want to do, you you uh, you, you don't want to uh, you, you don't want to use the assumption of utility maximization, okay? But you what you want to do is uh, you you, uh, you you are trying to model what you observe, okay? You are trying to 
model what you observe in the market. Uh, apa nama dia? Okay, the, the American institutionalist. Uh, forgot the name. Dixon. In the, no. Yeah, forgot the name. Uh, so anyway, uh, so what, what he asked his student to do is, he asked his student to go to the market okay, and describe Describe what's happening in the market to him. Okay, after describing what happened in the market to him, then you model what happened in the you model what happened in the market. Okay, okay. When you go to the market, you will not see uh, you will you will not see the seller uh, uh, do calculation maximize maximize profit subject to subject to cost constraint, right? Okay, so what's happened in the market? You are going to have people bargaining. Okay, one people say, uh, I want, I want to buy this product for one ringgit. The seller want to sell two ringgit, and they're going to be bargaining. So in the end, that is a, and that is a meeting point. So, how do you, how you, how how, how do you model that? So how whether it is possible to model or not? It, it can be modeled. Okay, just like when you are talking about the intersection between. Demand curve and supply curve. Okay, you have the function for demand curve. You have function for supply curve. You equate those things, you can find the equilibrium, right? Okay, so you have equilibrium price and you have equilibrium. You have equilibrium quantity. Okay, but in the real world, there is no demand curve. There is no supply curve. So, how does how does you get that equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity? Okay, uh, Walras talk about the um, uh, well, let's talk about grouping in the dark. I, I forgot the French words. Uh, okay. Let's well, talk about grouping in the dark. And what people do is people use the cockpit model to show what is grouping in the dark. So in the cockpit model, just like, uh, just like this one, uh, the cockpit. Okay. Price go up, price go down, up, up, price go up, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, and then you get to your and then you, you get to your equilibrium. So yes, similar to when you go to the market, you have bargaining process. Bargaining process, someone says price higher price, someone says lower price, higher price, lower price, then you get to your then you get to your equilibrium. Okay? So the cockpit is in a way is trying to show what, what really happened in the what really happened in the market. Okay? But when you show what really happened in the market, you may get something like this. You may not get to the you may not get to the equilibrium. Okay, so the function that you get, the textbook writer already give you a nice function such so that you get the, you get your equilibrium. Okay, but there are a lot of situations where you will not be able to, you will not be able to reach your equilibrium. Okay, so the question is how are you, uh, how do you, uh, how do you model that? Okay, so how do you model that? So it's going to involve this thing. Okay, so how do you uh, have the uh, an abstraction process? Uh, behavioral content of the classical, neoclassical, and contemporary macro process. And here we are talking about the market economy. Okay, augmenting the content with concept of depth in economizing and lowering integration of behavioral approach for understanding climate change in the world economy. Okay, so now let's say you are, what you are trying to do is you are trying to explain, okay, you are trying to explain the market now. Okay, so you are trying to explain the market, you are trying to explain how do you, uh, how do you get a uh, price. Okay, so how do you get price? The simple one in your principal economy courses is just uh, demand and supply. Right? So that's your the first few chapters of your principle of micro. Okay. So if you want to look at it from a behavioral perspective, we have to look at okay, the process of how you get to that uh, how, how how you get to that price. Okay, what is the interaction between the seller? Uh, what is the interaction between the between the buyer? Okay, how does the how does the buyer anticipate what is going to be the demand? Okay, okay so let's say you are the uh, so let's say you are the, 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 the owner of a firm. Okay. Uh, how, how do you make decisions? 
Oh, okay, uh, much is that example. <laughs> let's say you are the, let's say you work at Giant, uh, the the grocery store. Indonesia pun ada Giant kan? Okay, so uh, you are work at you work at Giant. So you are one of the buyer in Giant. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to you need to uh, okay, you need to know how much you want to buy. Okay. Uh, how much? How much you want to order? Okay, when do you want to order? So how do you make your decision? You just say you are the buyer. It can be impossible. <laughs> okay, but but now you are working with the you are working with Jaya. Okay, so let's say you want to uh, you are talking uh, you you need to buy apple. So you have to decide how much apple you need to buy. Okay. So when are you going to buy an apple? <laughs> so when you want to apply, you also need to look at uh, whether it is demanded or not, right? Yeah. So how do you know whether it is demanded or not? Uh, uh, price. You are the one who set price. Uh, you you are you are the you are the uh, you you are giant. That's it. You are the owner of giant. Okay, okay. Oh, okay. So, okay. You are the owner of Giant. You want to sell Apple. Okay. okay. So, what is going to be your decision? How how much uh, how much Apple you are going to buy for you to sell to people? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So one is based on previous experience. Yeah. 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 So you can consider that Apple is one of the many types of fruits. You can say, uh, look at the reports of selling banana or bean apple. It will help you that there is a, like a demand on fruit. So you can try to yeah, buy some apple and just be selling it. Yeah. Yeah. And it is impossible for us to see the one this time. Yeah. We can observe for the people who yeah, yeah. the purpose of this. Yeah. So, so. So from from uh, okay, well, that's what you need to do. Okay, so that is that's what you are going to do if you are trying to if you are trying to model uh, the, the 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 process. Okay, rather than just talking about okay maximization of uh, profit, you have your you have your production function and you have your you have your cost function. So from a behavior perspective, what you do is you are you are explaining what happening. Okay. So usually what really happens is that if you are the uh, if you are the owner of the agent, what you are going to do is you are just going to look at your stock. How fast does your stock move? Okay, if your stock moves fast, then you know there is a high demand for, there is very high demand for Apple. When you see that your stock is moving fast, you can do two things. One is you can increase price. Okay? So if you increase price, what is going to happen? Uh, most probably demand is going to go down a little bit. But your profit is going to uh, going to increase. Okay, another thing that you can do is you can uh, buy more apples and maintain the price. So you are going to have more people buying apple. You also have you also have much higher profit. So you have to be, you have to find you have to find where is the optimum lah. Okay, where is the uh, apa benda lah? You punya total revenue, total cost, all those things. Okay, where does where does it spike? Okay, so. Uh, in a behavioral economics perspective, that's what you are going to, that's how you are going to explain it, okay? rather than talking about uh, maximization of utility. But, 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 but by doing that, you can also, uh, you can also come up with what is going to be the profit and everything.